هلا ما يدير ام دكتور علاء مصباح بروفيسور في اوبستريكس اند جينيكولوجي فاكولتي في بنس منصور يونيفرستي توداي اي ام جوينج تو سبيك اباوت ذا مانجمنت اوف نورمال ديليفري سو وات وي وانا ديسكاس توداي وات اباوت ذا ديليفري روم ذا اسسمنت اوف ذا فيتال ويل بينج انستيزيا يوزد ديورينج ديليفري delivery of the fetus delivery of the placenta and lastly the postpartum care so what about the delivery room in some centers in obstetric units there is a room for follow up during first and second stage and also third stage and fourth stage i mean the process of labor and the delivery the fetus and the placenta and the first one hour or four hours after delivery all of them in the same room so this is the use of combined labor delivery recovery and postpartum okay so the abbreviation of l DRB meaning labor delivery recovery post part okay why or what is the advantage of this the woman with her supporting person and the neonate remain in the same room throughout their stay okay while in other centers the obstetric use unit use a traditional labor room and separate delivery suite to which the woman is transferred when delivery is imminent and after delivery the woman may remain there or be transferred to a postpartum Unit. So there is a place for labor follow up, then another place for delivery, then another place for postpartum care. Okay? okay. So first we need to assess the fetal well being. Either using intermittent auscultation, as in this picture, the pinner, or the Doppler ultrasound, the handheld Doppler ultrasound, as in this picture, this is sonicate, okay, or by pinner, the traditional method used many years ago, okay, or using the continuous monitoring of the fetal heart rate using CTG. Okay, it depends on the patient is high risk or low risk, and this is done during second stage of labor. How to auscultate the baby if you are using the intermittent auscultation with sonicate or handheld Doppler ultrasound can be done every five minutes immediately after return contraction to detect the slow recovery of the heart rate suggestive of late decelerations okay what if any abnormality detected during intermittent auscultation the frequency of intermittent auscultation should be increased and the fetal heart rate should be auscultated again during the next contraction instead of waiting for further five minutes so if everything is fine during fetal heart rate monitoring yes record it every five minutes during second stage but if there is abnormality you should repeat measuring with the fetal heart rate in with after the next contraction okay okay what if the abnormalities persist then Arrangement should be made for 
the commencement of continuous electronic fetal heart rate monitoring using CTG. Okay? Unless an immediate vaginal birth is imminent. Okay. Let us continue with the management of normal delivery. What about anesthesia? What about the delivery of the fetus, delivery of the placenta, and postpartum care? As regards the anesthesia, I have many options. Either regional, like epidural analgesia, anesthesia, local infiltration anesthesia, like budendal nerve block, paracervical block, perineal infiltration, and I have a general anesthesia, okay? Generally, local anesthesia and opioids are commonly used. These but unfortunately, these drugs pass through the placenta. Thus, during the hour before delivery, such drugs should be given in small doses and cautiously to avoid CNS depression and the bradycardia and the new need. Okay? What about epidural analgesia? It is used increasingly in the recent years for delivery, also including cesarean delivery, and has essentially replaced the pudendal and the paracervical block. What is the type of local anesthesia used for epidural injection? Bobby Vakin. It has a longer duration of action and a slower onset than those used for the dental block, like DKE. What about spinal injection? May be used for cesarean delivery, but it is used less often for vaginal delivery because it is short-lasting and has a small risk of spinal headache and afterward. Okay? When a spinal injection is used, vital signs must be checked every five minutes to detect and to treat the possible hypotension. Okay? What about the bedindal block? It is safe and the simple method for uncomplicated spontaneous vaginal delivery if women wish to peer down and push or if labor is advanced and there is no time for epidural injection. However, it is not used commonly, it is rarely used. Why? Because epidural injections are typically used instead. Budendal block involves injecting local anesthetic through the vaginal wall at the level of the ischial spine. You inject the anesthetic drug like lidocaine. Why at the level of ischial spine? Because anatomically the, the pudendal nerve pass turning around the ischial spine. So guided by two finger in the vagina, palpate the ischial spine, then insert the syringe and containing lidocaine one percent and inject at this level. This block anesthetizes the lower vagina, perineum, and the posterior vulva. So, if you have a tear anteriorly, it is not covered with anesthesia because within the block covering the area of lower vagina, perineum, and the posterior vulva, not the anterior one. Okay? What about the paracervical block? We can do paracervical block by injecting a uh, lidocaine 5 to 10 millimeter of 1%, okay, at 3 and the 9 o'clock position at the vaginal wall, okay. And the analgesic response is short lasting, okay. Paracervical block is rarely appropriate for delivery. Why? 
because incidence of fetal bradycardia is more than 10%. It is used mainly for first and the early second trimester abortion. What about infiltration of the perineum with an anesthetic like lidocaine 1%? Yes, this is, can be used and it is commonly used, but this method is not as effective as a well-administered butyndal plug. Of course, it can help you in, in repairing perineal laceration and episiotomy. What about general anesthesia? Potent and volatile inhalation drugs like isoflurane can cause marked respiratory depression in the fetus. So, General anesthesia is not recommended for routine delivery. We can use nitrous oxide 40% with oxygen for analgesia during vaginal delivery as long as verbal contact with the woman is maintained. Let us go to the delivery of the fetus. What we are going to do? Vaginal examination, yes. Is done to determine position and the station of the fetal head and if the membrane is intact or ruptured. Okay? And to, the, to evaluate the adequacy of the pelvis and if there is cephalopelvic disproportion or not. And when the cervix is fully dilated and fully effaced, you can ask the woman to bear down and the strain with each contraction to make the head descend deeply in the pelvis. Okay? Never to ask the woman to bear down during the first stage. You ask her or encourage her to do that in the active second stage of labor. Okay? When the head Partially appearing at the vestibule, it is visible, about 5 cm of the head is visible now, during contraction and not receding in between labor pains. The following maneuvers can facilitate delivery and reduce risk of perineal laceration. And this is the main target from birth attendants, whatever obstetrician or midwife, you have to avoid perineal laceration during second stage, during delivery of the head. How can you avoid perineal laceration? By placing the left bulb over the infant head during contraction to control and slightly slow progress, as in this picture. You know that the vertex is delivered in extension in case of occipital anterior, okay? If rapid extension happen, perineal tear will occur. So I need this extension to occur slowly. So my palm of hand, of left hand, is pressing over the occiput down to make the extension slowly. While the other hand simultaneously with curved finger against the dilating perineum through which the infant brow or chin is left. To advance the head, the clinician should grab a hand in a towel and with curved finger apply pressure against the un the underside of the brow or chin, what's called modified region maneuver. We have region maneuver as in this picture and the modified one. So one hand over the occiput, preventing rapid extension of the head, so pushing down, and the other right hand with the forefinger try to compress the perineum to do pressure on the under surface of the forehead and the chin 
okay why you are doing this to prevent the rapid extension and injury of the perineum during delivery of the head so we are using either rigid maneuver or modified rigid maneuver what is the sequence of events during delivery in case of vertex presentation lock to this picture please first the head is delivered in extension as you see here then external rotation first restitution one its circle in the opposite direction of internal rotation or to do untwist of the head first then another one its circle in the same direction so the face is looking to the right side of the mother so I have two rotations restitution its circle and external rotation its circle okay the end result the face will be to one side to the right side of the mother okay in case in cases presented with vertex and the left occipital anterior the face will be to the right side of the mother after completing the external rotation okay what about delivery of the shoulder gentle downward traction on the head by the birth attendant until the anterior shoulder hangs behind the symphys views so anterior shoulder come first then elevation and tilting of the head upward will deliver the posterior shoulder then the rest of the body will be delivered easily okay okay sometimes we may need forceps or vacuum extractor if the second stage is prolonged and the iwana shorten it or in some cases with medical disorder cardiac disease or respiratory disease and i i don't want the woman to push okay so i am trying to help by using vacuum delivery of course it is outlet or low vacuum delivery because this is what is used in modern obstetrics okay may i need episiotomy and incision in the perineum to facilitate delivery no it is not routinely used as recommended in recent guidelines okay an episiotomy is not routinely done for most normal deliveries. It is done only if the perineum doesn't stretch adequately and is obstructing delivery. Episiotomy prevents excessive stretching and the possible irregular tearing of the perineal tissue, including anterior tears. Local anesthetics can be infiltrated if epidural analgesia is inadequate and you should know that 35 percent of women have dyspareunia after episiotomy so please don't do it routinely only when it is indicated okay let us go to the baby when the head is delivered the clinician determines whether the umbilical cord is wrapped around the neck if it is the clinician should try to unwrap the cord if the cord cannot be rapidly removed this way so do double clamp to the cord and the cut in between after delivery of the head the infant's body rotates so that the shoulders are in anteroposterior position. Gentle downward pressure on the head deliver the anterior shoulder under the symphysis. The head gently 
left it, the posterior shoulder slides over the perineum and the rest of the body follow without difficulty. Some obstetricians recommend during delivery of the posterior shoulder to do again support to the perineum or do pressure on the perineum with the other hand of assistant. Okay? The nose, mouth, and the pharynx of the baby are aspirated with the bulb syringe to remove mucus and the fluids and help start respiration. What about the cord? The cord, the umbilical cord should be double clamped and cut between the clamps and the plastic cord clap should be applied about five centimeter distal from the cord insertion on the infant. Why leaving this area of five centimeter to avoid injury if there is umbilical hernia, injury for abdominal viscera. Delaying the clamping of the umbilical cord for 60 seconds is recommended by the guidelines. Okay, why? To increase iron stores because more blood going to the baby, so iron stores is better. After that, the infant is thoroughly dried, then placed on the mother's abdomen. And this contact with the mother is very important. Some recommend to one hour of contact. If baby doesn't need any resuscitation, but if resuscitation is needed, put the baby on warmed resuscitation bassinet. After delivery of the infant and administration of oxytocin, Why we give oxytocin? This is for management of third stage, which is the placenta, to help separation and expulsion of the placenta. We give oxytocin either intramuscular or infusion, 20 units in 1,000 milliliter saline at rate of 125 milli per hour. The clinician gently pulls on the cord and places hand gently on the abdomen over the uterine fundus to detect contraction. Why you are using active management than conservative management in delivery of the placenta? Because active management of third stage of labor reduces the risk of postpartum hemorrhage and postpartum anemia. So active management is better than conservative management in uh, placenta delivery, okay? If the placenta is not delivered, you can use branded Andrews maneuver by doing controlled cord traction. Cord traction during the trying contraction by one hand while the other hand on the abdomen pushing the uterus up. A while the other hand do gentle cord traction down okay but this must happen during uterine contraction not during relax relaxation of the uterus why because if it is done while the uterus is relaxed possibility of inversion of the uterus can happen so you should do gentle cord traction downward while the uterus is contracting okay this is called branded andrews maneuver if not responding you can use oxytocin infusion in saline in the umbilical vessels if separation doesn't happen you can do manual removal of the placenta under anesthesia okay What about postpartum care? First, do an inspection to the cervix, vagina, perineum for any laceration. If present, 
do repair if you did an episiotomy also do repair and control any bleeder okay and you should know that we have different types of episiotomy either median mediolateral g shape lateral episiotomy extended episiotomy and so on so you should repair in layers and the best for healing is the median one but the problem with the median episiotomy it can extend to reach the anal sphincter causing complete perineal tear but the advantage of median episiotomy it is easily repaired and the more cosmetic and the less bleeding while mediolateral episiotomy more bleeding more painful takes longer time for repair and less cosmetic than medium episiotomy however the advantage of mediolateral it doesn't reach the external sphincter so the possibility of extension to another sphincter in case of mediolateral episiotomy is not present okay so this is the advantage and disadvantage of each one okay if the mother and the infant are recovering normally they can begin bonding many mothers wish to begin breastfeeding soon after delivery and we should encourage her about that Be careful that mother, infant, and the father should remain together in a warm, private area for an hour or more to enhance parent-infant bonding. Then the infant may be taken to the nursery or left with the mother depending on her wishes and the condition of the baby. Again in postpartum, for first for the first hour after delivery, the mother should be observed closely, aiming for what? To make sure the uterus is contracting well. How can I know? By palpating the abdomen to find out if the uterus is contracted or relaxed. And if there is vaginal bleeding or not and the how much is the blood loss also to measure the vital signs the blood pressure the pulse temperature okay respiration respiratory rate and so on so this one hour after delivery is very important close follow up for any woman deliver immediately after delivery of the placenta you should do this postpartum care this is the end of my lecture thank you this is my websites in youtube and on amazon as the author for all these books textbook of obstetrics textbook of gynecology contraception handbook and the mcq book go there and you can find them thank you